Hi, I'm Teresa Lieb, Food Systems Analyst at GreenVis. Regenerative grazing is really exciting. Compared to industrialized beef production, raising cows on pastures may reduce air and water pollution, improve their well-being, and sequester carbon in soils. Even though I'm a big fan of these benefits, I don't think of it as a climate solution. That's why my overhyped trend for 2021 is regenerative grazing. Mass production of grass-fed beef won't be possible. Cows raised on pasture need more land and water, grow slower, and stay smaller than their feedlot counterparts. But the U.S. has a limited amount of pasture land available, which shouldn't be expanded to avoid clearing native vegetation or competing with other food production. This means that a nationwide shift to grass-fed beef consumption would require increasing pasture productivity between 40 to 370 percent. Innovating our way out of this huge productivity gap isn't feasible. And we haven't even started talking about milk, bacon, or eggs. Where will all those animals be raised in a regenerative system? On the other hand, my underhyped trend for 2021 is legume innovation. Legumes often get a bad rep, but they're less boring than they sound. Just think of burritos, peanut butter, or impossible burgers. There are about 18,000 species of legumes in the world, but the vast majority of US farmers only grow one, soybeans. Big Ag has gotten really good at that, with yields quadrupling over the past 70 years. This low cost and steady supply has enabled our large-scale meat consumption, since most soy is used as animal feed. Instead of continuing on the soy and factory farm meat path, we should invest in some of the other 17,999 legumes. They can bring diversity back to our lands and form the basis of a flourishing alternative protein industry. If we succeed at that, we might even indulge in a grass-fed burger every now and then.